I wanted to do a quick video on what I've been learning about moving from Presonus Notion over to Dorico. As you all know, when you pick a, a notation software, it's all about how you use it and what your principal use is. My principal use has to do with creating a playback tracks uh, for clarinet quartet to play to as well as do arrangements. So to do that, I would take a, ski, a sheet of music, uh, a score, I would scan it using scan smart, I'm sorry, scan score 64, create a digital file, open that in Notion, clean it up, assign voices, and then create um, a play along version. Um, I wanted to move to Dorico because I got a very good deal on it, and I don't know that Notion 6 is going to be supported much longer. So I wanted to go through what I had learned about using Dorico 5 along with the ARIA player, uh, in particular with Garretton Personal Orchestra, which is what I tend to use. So, okay, and I'm running a Macintosh uh, in Sonoma uh, with Dorico 5. So the first thing I want to comment, it has to do with importing. It's important in Dorico to set your import options on an, X, on an XML file to include rests, or the rests will vanish. But the other thing I learned is that you really have to import an MXL file. If you don't import an MXL file, if you import an XML file, you won't see the dynamics. So what I had to do, since Notion 6 only exports XML, I had to take the XML, open it in MuseScore, and then export it as an MXL, and then open up the MXL file in Dorico. So let's go ahead and open an MXL file in Dorico, and let's get started. So here we are, opening it up in Dorico Pro 5. And here's the piece. Uh, it's just a, an arrangement I did of Civil War tunes. Um, the first thing I want to comment on is when you bring it over, it's going to be in concert pitch, which can be kind of confusing. So if you click the transposed pitch, you will see that the bass clarinet part opens up. And I want to remove some of these parts that uh, really aren't necessary. To do that, I'll go to the Setup tab and simply delete the parts that I don't want to bother for from this perspective, delete player and parts layout. And uh, let's go ahead and take the name off the top on the flow. So the best thing is just, you know, go ahead and delete the flow. So here we are. Um, and let's move over to the right mode where you can see your score. And now let's talk about how we're going to assign these voices and how I tended to use the ARIA player. And you'll notice that in fact, uh, the uh, dynamics are there. So let's click the play tab and you can see of course here at the top is the MIDI data and down here uh, is the mixer and it's showing the instruments and you can click to see the MIDI channels which by the way I don't recommend playing with the MIDI channels because some of the um, some of the functionality on a Mac doesn't work for example you can't set the pans uh, on the MIDI channel to zero with a click. So I, it's best just not to even use those for the purposes that I'm talking about today. If you have your own purpose to use them, by all means do so. But for the purposes that we're talking about, at least how to assign and use Garretton Personal Orchestra, let's leave MIDI out of it. So the first thing um, we want to do here is we want to go and we can see over in the Track Inspector is where you can see all of the instruments are assigned to the track. And if you look at the Halley on Sonic, which is its normal um, version, we can see that in fact, the channel shifts depending upon um, what, what MIDI track is being brought in. But we don't wanna use Halley on Sonic. We wanna use the ARIA player. Best way to do that at this point is to go to VST and MIDI. This is where you can add your VST instruments. Add. 
and then go to your drop down, Garreton, and the REM Multi. I use the Multi because it's the simplest. I've not found much difference between just choosing ARIA and ARIA Player Multi. Um, so I just use the Multi because it's simple. Well, now that I've done that, I can go ahead and assign my parts to the MIDI channels. So let's go ahead and put in, uh, let's go put our clarinet player one, clarinet player, whoops, clarinet player two, Sorry guys, hands a little shaky. Clarinet player three. Clarinet player solo is four. And then of course, bass clarinet here. Okay, so now we have our, our, our instruments loaded into the ARIA player. Um, you know, in, in MIDI channel one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so now that we have gone ahead and set up the ARIA player in the VST and MIDI, we have to assign each of the tracks to the ARIA player. So let's go to the first track, select ARIA player multi, and we're good, channel one. Let's click channel number two, the second clarinet. Let's select the ARIA player multi. Ah, oh, but look, it defaulted to the first channel. But remember, we put the second clarinet on channel two. Third clarinet, ARIA player multi, and once again, defaults it to channel one, but in the ARIA player, it's channel three. Fourth clarinet, let's go ahead and switch it to the ARIA player multi, and it has to be, of course, channel four, because that's what we set. Bass clarinet, ARIA player multi, and as we talked about, it has to be channel five, because that's what it is in the ARIA player. Okay, so let's go back to the first clarinet, and let's notice what they call the expression map. I wanna make a comment about this. Um, the ARIA player uses a combination of CC11 as well as the mod wheel. So in playing around with the expression maps, I have been choosing uh, principally um, the modulation wheel dynamics for each of them because I know that's what the ARIA player supports. So for each of these, I'm gonna choose modulation wheel dynamics. By the way, I tried um, CC11 and that seems to work as well, um, but this is what I've been, I've been using. So now each of them is set to the correct MIDI channel and the correct expression map, which is how you, which is how the dynamics are then sent to the ARIA player. So, okay, we've set our tracks and we see all of our instruments down here corresponding to this. Well, let's go ahead and click play and see what happens. Go here to the transport, go back to the beginning. Wait a minute, hold on. All of the sound is going through the first channel. What's up with that? And what's up with that down here, I mean. So if you were try to just hear one voice, watch what happens. Solo the first. I want to hear, oh, it all goes away because all of the sound is going through, all of the sound is going through the first channel. How do you fix that? <clears throat> well, this happens to be um, related to how the ARIA player interfaces with Dorico. So in the ARIA player, to make each voice correspond to the, um, to the mixer, it has to do with how you set the output. So here we can set player two to three, four. We can set player three to five, six. We can set player four to seven, eight. We can set player 
5 to 9, 10. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now watch what happens. Go back to the beginning here. Look. So now, so now we can go ahead and individually audition each track after setting the outputs in the ARIA player. So, okay. Now the next thing I should say is you could, if you wanted to, add five instances of the ARIA player and load the instrument in each instance on channel one and it would show up there as well as separate instances. But I have found this to be the, the, the most direct way of going about routing it. So now that we've done that, we can ask ourselves a couple of questions, which has to do with now panning, placing the instruments on the stage, as well as creating um, reverb. Now, of course, you could do that directly in the ARIA player. And some of you actually may prefer the sounds that have uh, that accompany the Garretton Aria player, and, and certainly feel free to do that. But if you've got the Aria player, you know how to do that. So we're going to do it though instead in Dorico. So okay, we've got each of our instruments, and we can see here that each of the uh, of the mixers have uh, panning. Now. Most of you are going, well, where's the sends? Where's the rest of the buttons? Well, to get the rest of the buttons, you got to move this up, 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 until they show up. Now you've got your inserts, you've got your EQ, you've got your sends. So you got to move the window up for them to show up. No shortcut around that. The first thing you'll notice is that Dorico automatically added um, a reverb. And you can see that the insert button is blue. And if you click on that to bring down the inserts, oh, you see that Reverence, their EQ, I'm sorry, Reverence, their, um, their reverb is already there. If you click on Reverence, the little E, you can pull up the Reverence uh, um, e, uh, reverb module and let's click some let's find one that it's hard to hear the LA studio so let's go ahead and browse and find one that's like larger so we can actually hear it so let's do a big one let's do a uh, warm wooden church okay so now we'll we'll uh, we, we clicked ourselves we got ourselves a warm wooden church which should have a lot of reverb so you can hear it and let's go back and let's go back to the beginning and see if we hear reverb. Up, uh, no reverb. Well, of course there's no reverb because we haven't sent it anywhere. We have to send a send over to the uh, to the um, to the to the reverb channel. So here we got the sends. We click sends, and we can see that. There is no reverb being sent to the um, to the send channel. Now you can set each of these numbers separately, and, and and you can certainly do that. But there is a simple way to do it inside of Dorico if you just want to kind of get a general idea of where you're going. Over here, you can see there is a button called Live Stage. And there's a button called Live Space. Live Stage lets you set the players in the stage. I'll click on that and show you. So here's a stage. There's the front of the stage. And you'll notice that all of our players are dead center, front of the stage, sitting right on top of each other. That means they're all panned to the center. And there is no send to the reverb. So let's say you want everybody to have some reverb. Go ahead and 
I just dragged and clicked. Now they're all on top of each other, right? So you can take them now and you can pull them like this and look what happens. The reverb changes. So now we've got reverb going into the send. So we should be able to hear it. It's probably best I can hear it when I just hit the off button. It's kind of a dry signal. So uh, let's go back. I, th I thought I'd have a nice strong signal so you could hear it. But let's go back and browse and find another one. Let's say, uh, let's say a ballroom. Oh, Viennese Hall. Okay. Let's see what happens when we do this. So you can hear some reverb there. Um, but let's go ahead and just make it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and put it way in the back. Uh, now you can hear it. So you can use your staging there to set your reverb manually. Um, the reverb, the limits of the reverb are actually set here in the large, in the near send and the far send. So these, you can read in the manual about this, about how you can set the, the range of your reverb in the live space. But I won't bother to go through that now because you can kind of figure that out on your own. Well, okay, so fine. What about panning? Well, you can do it either by just clicking L81, I'm just making this up as I go, L40, L41, center, 47, L81, 70, 80, doesn't much matter here. Okay, so um, now we'll have pan. But now if you click again on the live stage, you'll see it reflected here. So you can actually grab and change these numbers as you, as you wish in the live stage and it will be reflected inside of the, um, of the sends. And if you were at a stereo, you should have been able to hear some stereo separation. Well, that kind of covers what I wanted to do to get you folks up and running. Um, pretty straightforward, but I actually had to do a lot of looking around to find out some of these nooks and crannies. So I hope this has been helpful to just get you started. Okay, thanks much, folks. Have a great day.